Hey, Ronnie Dahl for WheelingInWestAustralia.com. This video is all about solar panels. So as you can see here, we've got flexi panels, we've got hard foldable panels, we've got fixed panels, we've got solar blankets. So this video is designed to help you make the right decision, whether you want high quality stuff, or if you just need low quality stuff, the cheap stuff, and how many watts you actually need. And do you need a blanket or do you need a fixed panel? Or do you actually need a folding panel? Stay tuned and find out. Before we get into which solar panels and watts and all that stuff that you need, you need to sort out your battery bank first. And I am a classic example of not having enough amp hours to run all my stuff. I have two fridges. You can probably hear the humming in the background. With both these fridges going, they're pulling about six to eight amps of power or six to seven that's quite a bit of current and out of a 100 amp hour battery well a 100 amp hour battery that's agm is only 50 amp hours any agm battery or lead battery lead acid battery cut it in half of the amp hours and that is what you actually have it's 100 amp hour i have 50 amp hours because once you get down to 50 percent the battery is flat you can't use beyond that if you do try and use beyond that and you don't have a good electrical system that looks after things that shuts off at certain volts and stuff, you could actually cause a vehicle fire. You could start melting wires. So keep in mind, sort your battery bank out first. I should really have at least 200 amp hours because that'll mean that I'll have 100 amp hours and then I can actually run these two with the two panels I have. Sort out your power before you start messing around with, with blankets and panels because you may buy stuff you don't actually need. Hey, check out my monocrystalline panels. What is a monocrystalline panel? Okay, there are three different types. Monocrystalline, polycrystalline, and then there's amorphous. Amorphous we'll get to soon. You don't really even have to worry about polycrystalline because most panels that you will find for camping and full driving applications are monocrystalline. It's just a different construction, different color, slightly more efficient, more forgiving with angles to the sun, and that's pretty much all you will find anyway. So if you really want to know more, just do a bit of research. Then we have Amorphous. Welcome to Overcast. We've left the hairy fellow out in the outback. We will go back to him pretty soon. So what I want to explain here is amorphous. You already know the difference between polycrystalline and monocrystalline. This is an amorphous blanket. Amorphous means shapeless. A bit like potato mash, Play-Doh, whatever you want to refer to. It's shapeless. The benefit of an amorphous blanket is these conditions right here. Overcast situation. Let's quickly compare these two side by side. I just plugged this one into my BMS and it registered 4.1 amps. Then I swapped over and plugged this one in, the amorphous, 3 to 3.1 amps, one amp difference. Here's the thing, that blanket there is 190 watts. This blanket here is only 112 watts. So this amorphous blanket is thriving in this overcast situation. To make a choice between these blankets, it's going to come down to where you live. If you live in an area far south of Western Australia or over east or whatever, Tasmania, this would be the blanket. If you're going to go for a blanket, this would be the blanket. It's going to give you more in overcast situations, comparatively in size. The monocrystalline panels or blankets, that's the stuff you want up north or where it's sunny most of the time. This blanket here will still perform in those situations as well but the bang for buck when it comes to amperage that's what you're considering because if you spend money on this which I believe is close to the same price as that you're not going to get as many amps out of it however if you're in overcast situations you're going to be happy you own an amorphous and not a monocrystalline panel or blanket so there's something to weigh up there so that's the difference between the monocrystalline polycrystalline and amorphous the basic difference i'm not going to get into the scientific difference um, as far as i'll go is these panels here can take from the red spectrum of light all the way to the blue and that's pretty much the whole color range of light the fixed solar panel 
Here we have the flexi panel, and here we have some hard panels up on the roof here. They're both the types that you will fix to a surface. What I'm talking about now is vehicle mounted so they stay on the vehicle. So like I mentioned before, don't fall into the trap like I have. This is the incorrect way of setting them up. They're just bolted flat down to the roof. They really need to have some kind of pivot so you can pivot them towards the sun. And you've got to be careful how you pivot them as well because if you pivot them both this way, this one might block the back one. There's a few things you've got to think about there. Now with these, these are ultra lightweight. These red arc panels up here, which are 80 watts each, they weigh about eight kilos each. These weigh about one and a half kilo. Now the difference between these two, if I was to mount one of those onto a flat surface, which they need to go on because they're flexible, they gotta be on a flat surface, there's no way the heat can escape from here. And heat is a current killer. It'll, it'll reduce the efficiency of your panel. In actual fact, if I poured a cup of water on my panel up here, I should see more amps coming out of it, or more power, more juice, more current coming out of it. These are actually perfect for those rooftop tents that flip open like this. But you could fix these onto one as well. These you can glue on, these you have to bolt on. So it all comes down to what you wanna do. But I would recommend a hard panel like this because it has a gap underneath it and that can disperse some heat. So these will be more efficient. Now here's the worst thing about a fixed panel, apart from not being able to angle it. And that is when you go to camp, you're gonna park in shade. We always go for shade because we don't wanna be sitting in the sun, you're gonna cook. So if you go for shade, or if you go close to a tree and you put your vehicle in partial shade, well, at some point of time during the day, that tree is going to cast a shadow over your panel and your panel's basically doing nothing. Now the foldable panels versus fixed panels. A foldable panel, the whole purpose of this is you can take it, you can put it out in the sun like we have here. The sun's right there. Let's adjust it maximum performance out of that panel. There are cheap foldable panels and there are high quality foldable panels. The main difference on high quality and cheap will be the regulator on the back, more on that a bit later. But what you don't want, well, you prefer to have the regulator closer to the battery than in the panel because the heat from the panel can, can affect the performance of your regulator. But the main good thing about these is imagine if I had that a foldable panel on quick release clamps up here. I could get to camp, or I'm not getting sun here because I'm in shade, unclamp it, face the sun. Or just like these are, you're in a bag, pull it out of your tray, out of your wagon, off your roof rack, set it up wherever the sun is. You just need a long cable. This is a long cable, and the thickness matters too. This one here is definitely overkill, but you want something pretty thick so you don't lose current over the course of the cable. So this is where cables, you gotta keep in mind, the cable length. So you can bring it away from the vehicle to the sun, but not too far. Solar blankets. With solar blankets, you don't usually get a regulator with it. These are meant to be plugged into a regulator, more on regulators later. With blankets, they fold up into nothing and they can be stowed away. They are quite weighty for what they are. Now, the surprising thing is with the amorphous and the monocrystalline here, this one is a 190 watt panel. This one here is 112. Look at the size difference. So amorphous blankets are a lot bigger and produce less wattages and less amps compared to a monocrystalline. However, these, like I said, these are good for if you live in southern regions where, you know, it's overcast and there's in high sun. You will need cables for these kind of blankets. So you can't just buy a blanket, you need to buy a cable as well. Some blankets may come with cables. Blankets you can lay over a bush. Some blankets you can actually walk on. Like the amorphous. I wouldn't recommend doing it, but this one can handle it. Monocrystalline, I'll be a bit more careful there. I wouldn't walk on this one. So blankets, you, know, you can throw it anywhere. It's, you can put it over your windscreen. That is a great way to do it because you can angle to the sun. Uh, I wouldn't recommend putting it on the bonnet because it will scratch, your, will scratch the hood. And you can pack them up to nothing. They take up a lot less room than these big panels do.
keeping your solar panels clean. This will help with efficiency. So driving with a vehicle, they get dusty, right? So wet cloth, run over it. Look, this one's not too bad, because I think I've done this just the other day. However, after a big long drive, say Gibb River Road, down a, just a general gravel road even, you get to camp, you're relying on your solar, there's a lot of dust on it. By cleaning your panels, the most I've gained from doing this has been about 2.5 amps, just from cleaning the panels. And not only that, with a wet rag, you're taking the heat out of the panel, and for a brief moment until they get hot again, they are producing more current. So pouring a glass of water over your panels and cooling them down will actually make them more efficient. Heat is a killer when it comes to solar panels. Uh, but it's quite ironic because they're relying on a hot sun to get the power in. Also your blankets. Clean your blankets. Now, quite often you can get leaves and stuff on blankets. And look, this leads me on to the other thing. What is the difference between a high quality blanket and your cheap low quality blanket? Or solar cells, the panel itself. Let's get into that. The shadow factor. This is where high quality versus cheap comes into play. I'm casting a shadow over this blanket. This is a high quality blanket. I'm covering a third of the cells. It'll still operate on those cells here. It'll still operate. If I, however, go to a cheap inferior one, or you know your cheaper brands, that will shut down the whole panel in most cases. Not all cases, but in most cases, these panels with the design if you, if I so much as do that in the middle, that can shut the whole panel off, or a big portion of it. Over here, I've just cut out one or two cells. Shadow factor with a twist, amorphous. If I put my hand on this, on this cell here, most other panels will shut down that cell. Amorphous works around my fingers. It'll still operate even from this cell that I'm covering. Including all, all these here, it'll still operate. On the edges, it'll still pick up light. That's the advantage of this kind of panel here. However, they take up a lot more room. High quality panels versus cheap panels, that is the difference. High quality versus your cheap stuff. So I've spoken to a CEO of a particular company and an electronics guru. And I asked them both about, you know, why does a lot of stuff come from China and how do you differentiate high quality versus low quality? They both gave me a similar story. And the story goes, when something is assembly, assembled at the factory or made, it will come down the conveyor belt or assembly line and someone or a robot will sit there and sort it out. So they'll, they'll look at a certain bit of solar cell or an LED light chip and they'll determine if it's the perfect A grade or a really good B grade, or C grade, or the others. And that's how it's determined by. So all the high brands, all the well-known brands where the expensive stuff is, high quality stuff, they all use A stuff. They're not gonna use B, C, or the others. And then you got the competitors, and then you got the bottom end guys. So that's pretty much the best way. I've had this explained to me, and that's the best way I can explain it to you. Now, how do you choose? Why should you buy A? Why can't you just buy B, C, or the others? Okay, I'll give you my point of view, and then you can decide. Now, I'm gonna take my lights and solar panels as an example. I use my lights a lot. I do rely on my solar panels now, because if I, that's the only way I can charge stuff. We're in Australia. You'd be mad not to use solar. So, for someone who uses solar a lot, say, traveling around Australia, um, or your long expedition trip, Canning Stock Route, Amberdale Highway, Cape York, somewhere where you need to rely on power, real remote, I would only go for A, my opinion. At least go for B, but I would go for A. Now, if you're a weekend warrior, fisherman, you just need to make sure that your battery is not gonna go flat, you got the radio on, uh, you're a weekend warrior, just go out every now and then, you go camping three or four times a year, that's it, and uh, you just need a bit of solar power. I'll go for C or the others. Maybe B if you 
you know, got a bit of money you want to get rid of, <laughs> but I would go for the lower end. If you don't need it, you don't need to rely on it, don't go for A or B. If you need to rely on it, go for A or go for B if you can't afford the high quality stuff. That's the best way I can put it to you. Come back here again. We're now talking about different types of charges. I'm running two charges right now off both these blankets. Now blankets you don't get a regulator with, so you must install your own regulator. So to quickly run through what I have here, on the front we have the 190 panel hooked up to my BCDC. So this is a BCDC 1225D. The D means it's solar ready. Um, however, you still have to wire it to be solar ready. So if you do get a BCDC, whatever brand it is, just make sure that it's solar ready, but also that it's solar ready wired. It has to be wired solar ready, otherwise you're gonna to have to do that yourself. Moving on to the back, we have a BMS. So this is what I use to basically control all my power, but it also does solar. So for people who don't need these extravagant things here, you just want a solar regulator, just get a solar regulator. Just make sure that it's not a PWM controller. MPPT is what you want. MPPT will give you more performance. More on this a bit later. So the difference between the blankets and a panel that doesn't have a controller to a panel that does have a controller like this one, you can get crocodile clamps and there's no stuffing about. You put it straight onto your battery and then it'll charge your battery. That's pretty much the difference there. But just be careful. If you do get a solar panel that has the controller on the back of it, make sure that it's not a PWM, make sure it's an MPPT. I'm not going to go into the, the full difference on them because it's very technical. You can research that yourself. But if you want to take my word for it and maybe research it afterwards, MPPT is the way to go. The basic difference is, without getting into it, is an MPPT controller will give you much more bang out of your blanket or your panel. It will give you more energy out of it, more amps. A PWM will actually almost halve the efficiency of the panel, of the power coming out of it. So here's the reason why you don't want a controller on the, on the back of your panel, like this one here. It has one here and this is a cheap controller as well. Now the problem with that is the heat. Heat kills the efficiency of your panels. So there'll be a lot of heat right here and it's right on the controller. Also with cable length, you want the long cable to be between the solar panel and your controller and then the shorter cable to be between the controller and your battery, not the other way around. In other words, you want the controller to be as close as possible to the actual battery, not the panel, the battery. Another thing about solar panels and the controllers on them, if they don't state on the website that the controller is a PWM or an MPPT, then more than likely it's a PWM, so just be aware of that. For the guys that are looking at doing the cheaper option, want to get the most cheapest way possible, then I would suggest getting a really good regulator slash controller, so really good solar controller, and then go cheap on the panels. Don't do it the other way around. If you go cheap on the controller and you get some mid to high quality panels, it's not going to work well that way. The other way around will work much better if you want to save money. How many solar watts do I need? How do I work that out? Well, this will be in another video with even more tips and advice. Comment below more questions and some tips. So a lot of people have requested this video and I hope it's answered most of your questions. Look, I could, I could have gone way more into detail and technical stuff with all this uh, information that I've researched and uh, I've, I've even sat a bit of a sort of like a one-on-one -on -one seminar with a technical guru just to make sure I get all the facts and everything right. So look, if you want more specific information, comment down below. Um, any questions, comment down below too. What do you use? Do you use a blanket, fixed panel or foldable panel? Comment down below. And uh, subscribe somewhere on the screen. If you want to support creation like this, patreon.com slash Ronnie Dale. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.